Good afternoon. So um, I started working in a boys and girls club over 30 years ago in South Philadelphia as part of a uh, field placement for graduate school. And I would describe myself, as somebody said this morning, as deeply invested and absolutely convinced that it works without a lot of scientific evidence. Um, so um, I'm probably going to come at this from a little different direction. Uh, what I was what I want to do is share a, a couple of, uh, of models about how we've um, developed a program and then, and then implemented it and some of the, some of the challenges that uh, we, we have in doing that. And I'm not sure how many people are familiar with that familiar with the Boys and Girls Clubs. We have 1,100 separate organizations all over the country. They're all their own 501c3 corporation. It's 4,000 clubs. Some of the organizations are huge, ten, fifteen million dollar budgets. Others are one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollar budgets. Some are in urban areas. Some are in cities. Some are on Native American lands. There's a club on every military base around the world. So we have a, a big diversity of communities and diversity of, of need. Four million kids, one point four billion. That sounds like a lot when you see it all at once, but when you break it up in four thousand places, it's not very, very much. Fifty thousand adult staff. About a quarter of them are full-time, which means we have a very transient workforce because about three-quarters of who's working with kids in clubs are, are, are part-time. So it gives you just sort of a context of the, of the, of the environment. And the, I want to talk about two different programs and how we're approaching them differently. And the first one is a program called Project Learn. And um, Project Learn was based on some research and thinking by Dr. Reginald Clark about what kids do outside of school that makes them successful in school. And his, his research led him to believe that kids that spend 25 to 30 hours a week outside of school and what he called high yield activities did better in school. So that seemed like a good model for us. So we worked with him and developed a, um, a program that we wanted to test and we were able to get some funding and we did a quasi experimental design uh, and we adapted his work to how we thought it worked in a club so that we, have, we often have kids for 15 to 20 hours, so if we can program that time so that that that's, meets his criteria of high yield, we felt that we could have a, have a difference. So the program ended up ha having these kind of components. One was homework, help, and tutoring. That's kind of intuitive if kids do their homework. If they get help when they need help, that that's going to do better, and that was part of his research. The other part was high yield learning activities. In his case, it was conversations with adults, it was playing cognitive games, it was reading, it was writing, doing the kinds of things that uh, would, would support learning. We felt like we could take almost everything that happens in a boys and girls club and turn it into a high yield activity if we were, if we were really uh, smart about it. Uh, because 25 to 30 hours was gonna take them beyond the club, parent involvement became something that we built into it so we could educate parents. Um, we had to have a collaboration with schools um, so that the homework, help, and tutoring the kids were getting was going to be consistent with what they needed. And because kids don't naturally want to do their homework and necessarily do things, we build in a system of incentives, which wasn't necessarily paying them. It was more about recognition and goal setting uh, and that if kids did certain things in the club for a period of time that there was recognition with that. So I'll talk about what we what we did to, to replicate that. But just, you know, the, the first thing that came to mind when Karen asked me to talk was all the challenges of replicating it in that very complicated, messy system that, uh, that I described. And so the first one is staff turnover. Um, the second is organizational capacity. Um, we have, you know, clubs of all different shapes and sizes and sophistication. Third one is different local funder requirements. So we may say this is how the program should work, when they go to get it funded locally, the funder has a better idea and builds that into what they're going to fund. Um, community difference was talked about extensively this morning. Partnerships with schools. Some of our organizations have school districts that are great partners. Other school districts are very focused internally, what happens in the school, and not thinking beyond their walls. And so that makes it very difficult to replicate the program. And then just uneven, uneven resources. Uh, we are not passing through money to clubs. They have to raise their own own money, so they have a lot of autonomy in how they how they how they apply that money. So 
here are the solutions that we came up with. And what we didn't do was we didn't try to create a system where we certified or monitored every organization and club that did it. Um, we felt like that was not something that was going to be possible. Uh, we would require a huge investment and resources on our part. Um, we felt like that uh, we needed to have a, a strategy that enabled as many of those 4,000 clubs to use this because the evaluation came out really well. The kids, after a couple of years, were doing better than, the, than, than they were and doing better than the group that they were being compared to. So what we said is there's some core concepts here. This idea of 25 to 30 hours a week of high-yield activities is really what's central to making this work. How you end up getting kids to do that is less, in, is, is less important as long as, you, is, is, as long as you hold fast to, to those, those components of the program. We did all the usual stuff. We did manuals. We did, we, we replic we did uh, whole binders full of high-yield activities that, that clubs had done. We created a homework help program. It's the one thing we did sort of try to, 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 to make a little bit more uh, even across clubs so that uh, clubs were, kids were, kids were participating in, in homework more regularly, and there were some incentives for that. We lots of ongoing training because of turnover. Training is a never-ending thing. We've been doing this for over 10 years, and it's probably one of the most significant trainings we do every year because many of our clubs have new people. Um, we created sample proposals, and this is actually a really sneaky way to, to replicate something because we created the pro a proposal that they could go for funding. They just had to fill in the local information. But in the proposal, it described how the program should be run. Um, so the... The local funder would hold them, would, would be the, the group that monitored it. So don't tell any clubs that that's the strategy if you talk to anybody. So, uh, and then in some cases, we were able to provide pass-through funding where we were able to raise money to pass through to clubs. And in that case, we did do more monitoring and, and making sure that they, they, they were successful. I would say that there's, there's over 20, 2,500 plus clubs are running Project Learn right now. So that's a, a huge huge uh, impact. Uh, about a half a million kids participated in it last year, so that's a lot of, a lot of kids. Uh, on a scale of adapting from like absolutely fidelity to uh, adaption over here, we're probably much closer to here than, than over here. What it, what it, what's interesting though is the idea of a high yield activity has now become part of the culture of clubs that if you talk to people in Boys and Girls Club as part of the, the language and the way they think about whether it's a basketball league or an art program, how do we make this high yield? How does this more than about, about more than just painting or sculpturing or whatever the, the program is? Now, contrast that with a, a partnership that we're just at the very beginning. And um, through our work with Child Trends and Karen last summer, um, we became very interested in how we can uh, prevent the summer learning loss of, of kids since we have kind of an advantage is that we have we have kids for a full day in the summer um, and that we thought we could really do something here but we didn't have a program beyond project learn which which can be applied in the summer but there's parts of it that don't work so we've um, had discussions with Earl Farrell and the founder of summer advantage and they have a, a very specific program that's been evaluated and with with great results and we are, we are, we are looking for funding to, to, to kind of pilot this in clubs next summer. And it's a different, it's a different approach. So the first thing we did is like our, our missions about what we're doing are pretty compatible. But, and you see in the Summer Advantage where it talks about mastery of basic skills, reading, writing, and math. That's not something that's sort of core to a club. So uh, that's, that's the piece that we need, to, we, need to, we need to partner on. In terms of replicating it, uh, we're really thinking about this very different. Uh, our role as an organization is kind of figure out the partnership and how this might work, create some funding to test it, make sure it works in our environment because Summer Advantage has been going into to schools and, and doing it. And what we've came up with is that Summer Advantage will actually hire the staff that run their part of the program. And the core program is you know math, reading, and science. But a big part of the program is an enrichment program where it's more recreational focused. There's a field trip once a week. That's what clubs do in the summertime so that we feel like that we can, we can take advantage of the, that, the part of the program that's very structured, the summer advantage has done, 
and that we can work with the clubs to make sure that the rest of the, the day um, at the club is, is, is focused around that. Um, running out of time, so real quick, the Summer Advantage program is five hours. The need in the community for most parents is they want to drop their kids off at 7.30 and pick them up at 6 o'clock. Five hours isn't going to work for a lot of people, so a lot of kids would not be able to participate. So clubs run a full-day program. We feel like we can embed the Summer Advantage program into a big a part of that a part of that day, and the kids can still be part of the rest of the rest of the program at the at the club, so that it kind of meets it addresses the summer learning, and it also addresses the needs of the of, of parents and doesn't kind of leave the kids stranded for the the rest of the rest of the day. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is that these are these are very different approaches. Uh, with Project Learn, it was uh, you know a lot of adaption. We've got a core concept about what works. We want to get that out to a lot of people. With Summer Advantage, we're we're saying that you know what 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 Summer Advantage has has evaluated that works is this really this core curriculum that's very structured, not something that a lot of clubs are really are really good at. So a, a true partnership where we're bringing in the expertise to run that program but enabling the kids in the Boys and Girls Club that need that the most to, to have opportunity to that. I'd say the, the, you know, the, one of the things with Project Learns, I mentioned that that's become part of the, the culture of clubs, is there's sort of this ongoing innovation that happens. So even though we evaluated the program a while ago, there are some things that people discover when you have 2,000 plus entities doing it that really work. It's hard to go back and evaluate all of those. Um, so I think, you know, we, we try to make our best judgment about is that a really good idea or not, and then try to share that with, with, with others. So I thank you for the opportunity. My time is up. So. <laughs>